playing basketball. It's early. They woke up. They turned my living room into a basketball court. <laughs> I'm about to take a brief walk. I, put, I posted on Facebook. I made a post on Facebook about um, post on Facebook about the sadness of um, like I'm just it's just sad the uh, Lil Nas X those shoes that he's coming that he's coming out with collaboration with. Nike, and they have, it is like literally straight up witchcraft and in your face, just, it's sad because, um, you know, people, I've seen people put, putting up like cancel, cancel, all sort of stuff, and of course, uh, we cannot condone th these types of things, but, but canceling, I don't really think is the answer. I think we need to be, um, that's a young man, a young black man, whose soul right now is in the clutches of the enemy. And we need to be praying for his deliverance. Yes, prayer, not cancel. So I put up a, I put up a post before where I said we're, we're, we are casting out, we're throwing away people when we should be throwing away the demons. You can look at him and tell he's possessed by a spirit. He's totally possessed by a spirit. Hey, Bennett. Yeah. Baby, can you go grab my Bible? I was planning to go walk, and now I'm about to pull out this Bible. Because we got, because he's possessed by a spirit. So, and there's a lot of people that have this issue where a spirit has taken over. And we throw the person away. Like, when I looked at that, I was upset. But I wasn't mad at him. I see him as a victim. He's a, he's, a, he's young, and he's lost. And... When people, he's a grown up technically, yes, but um, grown ups that are damaged like that were children first. Baby, can you go get my other? Is my other? Oh, it might be in the car. I wanted to use my other Bible. You know, people, grown grown adults who are messed up were children first. Um, and there's 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 reasons why people are more susceptible to being caught up like that and we need to be recognizing that we are at we are in a spiritual war whether you want to believe it or participate in it or not you're still in it so basically when people keep making excuses and turning a blind eye to the things that have been happening in our face and it's becoming more and more blatant the things that the devil is doing and people like oh everything ain't the devil no everything is not the devil but right now a lot of stuff is and we're literally in the middle of a spiritual war and people are standing on the battlefield just standing there. They're like, I ain't in no war. I ain't in no war. And don't change the fact that you are in one <laughs> and whether you participate or not is up to you. So while you're standing there declaring you're not in a war, somebody's going to pull out, the, the enemy is pulling out his, his gun and, they, and shooting it at your kids. That's what just, because that's somebody's child and the enemy came out and shot their gun at somebody's child and we looking at some tennis shoes with human blood in them with with scripture on the side now check this out yesterday yesterday when i saw it i was sitting at the table with bennett and bradley we were having breakfast and i and i when i saw it i i i, I turned the phone to, to bradley first he's my seven-year-old and i said look what little Nas x made that's what I did, right? I pointed, I showed it to him, Bradley, my seven-year-old. Because, see, I talk about the things, the way the enemy tries to trick, um, trick you with my kids constantly. So they, I'm trying to let them, I'm trying to uh, impart the wisdom of God, the, the, the light, the, the light of the truth, which is the light, onto my children so that they, when they're out in the world without me, they can discern when something is bad. Okay, so I turned the phone to Bradley and he looked at it and literally it was like this. I said, I said, look, look, look what Lil Nas X made. Cause see, they, they really like Lil Nas X. They was like all the other kids 
that the devil was targeting by drawing him to that, that young man right before he turned him out and, and tried to destroy him. So I wanted to see what his reaction would be since I knew Lil Nas X was somebody he knew and somebody that he liked, right? Riley said, that's trash and pushed the phone away. So that was my seven year old. My 10 year old, I let him, he's like, let me see, let me see. So I showed it to him, right? My 10 year old, he did what a lot of adults do. He looked at it and he, and he saw that it wasn't, he looked at it, he was like, um, it has scripture on it. That's what he said. I said, really? Um, he said, yeah, look, t Luke 10, 18. He's got scriptures on it. I'm gonna, so, I, you, don't, don't mess it up now, Benny. Hold up. I'm trying to teach you, uh, buddy. Hold up. I'm going to read to y'all the scripture, right? And this is what we do. And this is how we get jacked up. And this is how Luke Nas X got jacked up. But I'm, but I believe that he's going to get delivered. That's what I'm believing for. And I most certainly will be praying for him and my sons. We, we, we praying for him. Okay? I'm not canceling him out. I'm not trying to throw away that young soul. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to send my prayers up to heaven. And I hope you guys join. Send prayers up to heaven to tr for the Lord to give him a supernatural encounter that he can't deny and give him deliverance. And then he can turn into a, a mighty man of God and win souls for the kingdom. That's what we need to be praying for, not canceling him out. But Luke 10, 18, let's go see what Luke 10, 18 says. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible, the, that Tony Evans study Bible. It says, he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. That's Luke 10, 18. So I read that to my son. I said, this is what Luke 10, 18 says. He was like, <gasps> he jumped up and ran off. He was mad, right? He, he was like, <gasps> and he jumped up and, and ran off. And I'm like, where are you going? Come back. Come back. He was like, oh, they tricked me. But listen to 19. This is what happens when you take one verse and stop. When you when somebody put up a scripture on Instagram or Facebook of one verse and you don't read nothing before or after it, then you can end up actually thinking like, you know, Satan is good or something. I don't know. But listen to verse 19. Lil Nas X need to read the next verse, honey. Listen. Look, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. That's 19. Basically, he cast Satan down, and then he has given us authority to trample, to step on scorpions and snakes, and nothing will harm us. He gives us authority, and oh, let me read about it. Look, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. We need to be praying. We need to be learning about spiritual warfare because we're in it. And you may not, you may say you're not, but that's why the devil is uh, wreaking havoc in your life and he's winning because you're not, you're not taking authority. The authority that we have as believers and followers of Jesus. And every time somebody falls away where we judge, I didn't, I didn't make a post to judge because I feel I'm sad for him and I'm praying for him. Right, because the kid, the kid is lost. He's lost, and he's and I want him to be found. Right, so I'm not judging him. I'm sending it out as a wake up, a clarion call for these for everybody. Keep making excuses when stuff is done right in our face, and the devil is just getting more and more blatant. Because when I posted that Super Bowl post, the amount of Christians who were trying to defend that hellish garbage was sickening and saddening. I'm like, you cannot be serious. There's literally flames coming up behind him. A fallen angel fell out the sky at the beginning of the performance. He's dressed like Lucifer. He's got demons dancing behind him, literally. And then everybody fell dead like zombies. And so people talking about, it's iron, it's music. Like, are you freaking kidding me? But you're a Christian and you're okay with letting your kids be fed this stuff? My kids, like, literally, we talk about this stuff all the time. I'm I, I don't know if I told y'all the story about, because my kids know Disney is bad. <laughs> they know. Like, we don't keep the Disney channel just sitting up on our TV and all that other stuff. And um, 
we uh we had went to McDonald's and got and Milo Rosa got a Happy Meal. She wanted French fries, but you gotta get her the whole Happy Meal because she really just wants the toy. And the toy was a Pokemon toy. And when Brad when Milo Rose pulled the toy out of the uh, Happy Meal, Bradley was like, "No, it's demonic." <laughs> he gets out of his seat and took his seatbelt off, and he over there trying to snatch the toy from Milo Rose. Milo Rose screaming and kicking like, "Ah!" Because she don't know. And Bradley's like, no, Milo Rose, it's demonic. I'm like, okay, relax, Bradley, just relax. When we get to where we're going, I'm, I'll tell Gigi when Milo Rose put it down and take it from her. And so she can't play with it. But they're like, he's like, Bradley takes a hard line. Bennett sometimes, you know, he might try to rationalize. And that's what adults do. And I'm teaching them. Like, no, we don't rationalize. And if you see a scripture, you go look at it yourself. And you go see what's around it. And ask God to give you discernment about that thing. And here's the other thing. I asked him after we talked about it. I said, baby, when you first looked at it, you turned your head to the side and you looked kind of confused. What was your first thought when you saw it before you started looking for something good because you wanted to see something good? I thought it looked bad, but then I saw the scripture and then I got, then I thought maybe it was okay. Well, because one, he likes Lil Nas X. So he didn't want to see bad in Lil Nas X because he likes them. So when he saw it, he like, this looks like, he, when he saw it, it, his initial reaction was like a stirring in his spirit, like, this ain't good. Except the person, the person he liked, so he, was, he wanted to see, so he kept searching until he found something to try to latch onto to make it be okay. So we were able to talk through that, and now he's like, what you say, Bennett? That's kind of sus. It's sus, he said. No, 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 I said like, sus. Okay, hold on, tell me how. That's kind come on, of, come on, come on. you gotta say it like, that's kind of sucks. You say it like but that. when you first saw it, Bennett, yeah. tell him what you thought when you first saw it. When I first th saw it, I thought, I didn't think that was Lil Nas X. You didn't? But even though Lil Nas X was sitting there on the picture? Yeah, I thought he was just like holding the shoe. Like, okay, was, so even if that's true, like, why would, I would not stand there holding something that is um, promoting not. Satan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so then, even if that was the case and he didn't make it, and but he's standing there holding it, that's, it shows what you represent. You have to be careful of the things that you align with Yeah. when you have people following you, right? Yeah. And so then when you saw the scripture, then what happened? I kind of thought, maybe, I just kind of thought that maybe those, like, I thought that he maybe had, like, maybe lost it to the she or something, and then he just put the scripture there and thought it was going to be good. Yeah. And then he showed me the scripture, like, Pretty bad. Yeah, you got upset. Yeah. Cause I, I just ran out the room. I know. You just jumped up and ran out. I read, so this, I read the scripture and then I just bolted. Yeah. So now we're gonna pray for him. All right. For his soul to be saved. All right. Right. But we're not gonna follow somebody just because we like them if they're going leading us down the wrong path. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. You can go. Also, before I go, can I? Oh yeah. Oh. Put that. No, boy, gone. So, literally, don't hide the stuff from your children because they're going to see it anyway. They're going to be at school on Monday and their friends going to be like, looky, looky, looky. And, and so a lot of times the parents, we try to block them from everything. Like, I don't show them everything. Of course not. But I knew that particular, I'm like, this is somebody that they liked and look up to. And if this crosses their eyes, I want to see. Also, it allowed me to see where, how far, like the areas of weakness uh, for my children and um, allow me to tackle it with them head on as a parent and guide them through it instead of them seeing it with their friends and him saying, oh, it's a scripture and thinking it's okay. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes we got to face it with our children so that we can rear them. You know, we don't just let them. So I showed it to them. I literally, I literally, as soon as I saw it, I showed it to them and talked with them through it because I wanted to see how they process that. Because I want my kids to be able to be, I'm not going to be able to be there all the time and ward off the bad things. And when bad things come in their face, I need them to know, get away from it. How to recognize it. Because we have, a lot of us adults have been completely uh, tricked the same way Lil Nas X. They, they literally, he, he made a, a post back in January where he said that his target audience was children. So they made us love him. They made his song be number one on the charts for a year. 
and all the kids dancing to it. Everybody know that song. And then they went and flipped it completely with all our kids watching to devil worship and witchcraft. And some people, some celebrities have done that with us as adults. We love them. They're doing all this nice stuff. And then they flipped it on us. And ain't nobody noticed that we didn't got it. It didn't got flipped on us. And we still following them and riding hard in the paint for them, even though they're leading us down the broad path to hell. And then when somebody says something about them because we have turned them into an idol, folks fighting hard, but don't nobody fight like that for Jesus. How you gonna fight for Oprah, but don't fight for Jesus? How you gonna fight for Will Smith, but don't fight for Jesus? Steve Harvey, it's completely sold out. But don't fight for Jesus. Yes, but first, in order to teach our kids how to make decisions, we first gotta know. You know, as I started to dive deeper into the Lord and he started to strengthen me and give me wisdom about certain things and strengthen my spirit, my gift of discernment of spirits and, and all that kind of stuff, Strengthen my faith. Do you know when I started to get strong and, and get rooted in the Lord, do you know that my children's spiritual gifts started to um, come out? So we got to be right in order to teach our children. And the problem is folks ain't right. They don't even know. They teaching their children the same mess that they believe in, which is not right. We're trying to mix and match doctrines. We're mixing doctrine, doctrines of demons with, with the word of the Lord. We're mixing it because it's convenient for us and it fits our truth. And then we're teaching that foolishness to our children. So I'm calling for all the saints to pray. We have to fervently pray, pray for Lil Nas X. The devil think they got that boy. But but I don't. But it, he's still here, so it's still work to be done. He's still here. The devil has not won yet, and so I personally will be praying for that young brother. I will be praying for him every day, the same way I pray for my children, because he will be a mighty warrior for the kingdom if everybody gets to watch him be delivered. And when when Jesus did deliverances, he did it with an audience. So this might be why. The Lord allowed the devil to think he got little Nas X just so that he could get him back right in everybody's face. I'm going to read you all this and then I'm going to go. Uh, I'm trying to find... I read this to y'all before too. I'm gonna read it again about Legion. Okay. Luke chapter eight, verse 26. Then they sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee, when he got out on land. A demon possessed man from the town met him. Oh, this, I don't know if this is Legion or not, but we're gonna read it. Um, for a long time he had worn no clothes and did not stay in the house but in the tombs when he saw Jesus he cried out fell down before him and said in a loud voice what do you have to do with me Jesus son of the most high God I beg you don't torment me for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man many times it had seized him and though he was guarded bound by chains and shackles he would snap the restraints and be driven by the demon into, the, into deserted places what is your name? Jesus asked him. Legion, he said, because many demons had entered him and they begged him not to banish them to the abyss. A large herd of pigs was there feeding on the hillside. The demons begged him to permit them to enter the pigs and he gave them permission. The demons came out of the man and entered the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the, Sorry. When the men who tended them saw what had happened they ran off and reported it in the town and in the countryside so it was people watching this happen and they start talking about what they saw right then people went out to see what had happened they came to jesus and found the man and found the man the demons had yes my mom okay give me a cup hold on y'all
Okay. They found, oh, where am I? They came to Jesus and found the man the demons had departed from sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Meanwhile, the eyewitnesses reported to them how the demon-possessed man was delivered. Then all the people of the Gerasene region asked him to leave them because they were gripped by great fear. So getting into the boat, he returned. The man from whom the demons had departed begged him earnestly to be with him. He begged to stay with Jesus. But he sent him away and said, go back to your home and tell all that God has done for you. And off he went, proclaiming throughout the town how much Jesus had done for him. So he went from being a crazy man in the tombs, breaking through chains, hurting himself, hurting himself. Everyone was afraid of him. He was completely possessed. Jesus delivered him and he went on to ministry. He went out preaching and proclaiming the good news of what God had done. He, Jesus did this with an audience. The people were spreading the news and the man was spreading the news. So I'm believing, I'm believing that the reason why God allowed this to happen was so that he could have a grand show of his, of his delivering power, of his grace and mercy and love for us. To, we need a mass move of the Lord for people to come back to him. See, people came back to him. They came to Jesus. So I'm believing that Lil Nas X is going to be a modern day legion. And I'm going to be praying into that every single day. I'm not going to be talking about this, this child. He's a kid. And the devil think he got him. But Jesus reigns supreme. So... Luke 10, 19, look, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. And that's what I'm claiming for Lil Nas X. We're going to pray. We're not going to let, I'm not, I'm not about to, I'm not, I'm not, I rebuke what I saw in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. And I, and I, and I'm believing that God is going to deliver that young soul. And I hope y'all will join me in prayer for him. Okay. All right. I'm about to go walk. I love y'all. Bye.